In today's video, we travel all the way back to the glorious year of 1988 and explore the origins of Warhammer 40K's venerable Rhino Assault Vehicle. Hi folks and welcome to the channel. My name is Lee. I'm your Old Hammered host. If you were playing Warhammer 40K Rogue Trader prior to the summer of 1988, as I was, your vehicle options were limited to the Citadel miniatures, metal buggies, bikes, jet bikes, speeders, etc. that were available at the time, though some squads could charge into battle on horses or even riding lizards if you were so inclined. While 1987's Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader did offer several pages of vehicle rules, as well as stats for bikes, flyers, crawlers, walkers, juggernauts, and even lowly passenger cars, the book also said that since the larger vehicles were almost impossible to manufacture as white metal kits, players should look to mass market plastic models from other manufacturers with an eye toward converting them for 40k. One very famous example of this is Rick Priestley's Gravitac vehicle made from a plastic deodorant dispenser, plastic spoons, and leftover model tank parts from the bits box. However, at the same time Rogue Trader was advising players to kit bash larger vehicles for 40k, it was also showcasing the as yet unreleased or even announced Imperial Land Raider on several pages, which makes me think that GW was at least kicking around the idea of plastic tank kits even before 40k was released, just in case the game took off and plastic tanks became something they could reasonably sell. Ultimately though, the Land Raider would not be the game's first polystyrene vehicle kit. That honor belongs to the legendary Rhino Assault Vehicle, which received a glorious multi-article rollout in White Dwarf issue 103 way back in July of 1988. Of course, there were earlier Rhino sightings. Here is a possible Rhino variant illustration featured in 1987's Rogue Trader, and a full-page Rhino ad featured in White Dwarf 102 However, though, it is White Dwarf 103 that properly introduces the Rhino to the Warhammer 40k universe. So just for the sake of posterity, I thought maybe we would flip through this classic issue and revel in the retro glory of 40k's first plastic armored vehicle. To begin, the back cover of issue 103 features a full page ad promoting the first Rhino box set, which contained enough parts to construct three complete Rhinos. The text in the ad describes the Rhino as the most versatile fighting vehicle of the 41st millennium, serving as both an armored transport and a highly maneuverable weapons platform. Boasting 10,000 years of combat history, the Rhino, it says, is possibly the Imperium's most widespread combat vehicle. In addition to components for three basic Rhinos, the box set also includes optional extras like dozer blades, color decals, bolt guns, grenade launchers, and even a full color poster. Sadly, I do not have a 1988 Rhino box set or the poster to show you, that would be cool, but what I do have is a 1989 assembly instruction sheet so you can get a sense of what was in the box. Before we go any further, let's pause to take a look at this Space Wolves Rhino, which I believe is probably a late 1980s, early 90s model. However, this Black Templar Rhino is a later incarnation from maybe around 2003, something like that. If you know for sure, please leave a comment, let me know. As you can see, it is a little bit chunkier than the original Rhino, perhaps because Space Marines were becoming a little bit chunkier as well. This old Vindicator here is kind of interesting because it seems to share the plastic body of an early Rhino with some added metal components, so it is quite a bit heavier than it looks. Okay, let's get back to White Dwarf 103. Flipping to page 2, we find another Rhino-themed ad, this time promoting a line of Rogue Trader era Space Marines designed for use with the Rhino and other yet-to-be-released Warhammer 40k vehicles. These special Rhino beakies were sculpted in a variety of poses, so you could have them holding onto the Rhino's handrails, popping out of hatches, or even leisurely reclining on the vehicle. Though that third option is probably inviting disaster, as shown in this Rogue Trader illustration. After all, what orc could resist blasting away at such an obvious target? The text in the ad describes this special range of beakies as a full fighting crew, armed, armored, and ready to scare the gumble juice out of the enemy. I would imagine these old figs are highly sought after right now, since they'd be ideal for retro dioramas and such. Turning to page 16, we get six pages of Rogue Trader Vehicle Rules clarifications, additions, and revisions, including several examples on how to correctly turn your Rhino or other 40k vehicle. The article also includes rules for collisions, equipment stowage, random weapon generation, 
and extensive hit location and vehicle damage charts. Then on pages 54 and 55, we get to the Games Workshop mail order section, where you could order a box set of three Rhino kits plus the extras for the princely sum of 10 British pounds. Just for fun, I visited the Games Workshop website the other day. It looks like a single Rhino model is now selling for about $55 American. So even factoring in for inflation, the exchange rate and the fact that the 2023 model is no doubt larger than its 1988 predecessor, it still costs quite a bit more these days to stock your motor pool with a fleet of Rhinos. And along those lines, if you were ordering some Rhino Space Marines back in 1988, two Outriders and a Beaky popping out of a hatch would set you back about £2.50. So three Rhinos carrying three Beakies each would set you back a total of £17.5. On pages 56 and 57, we find the heavy metal section of the magazine, showcasing a host of brilliant Rhino conversions and paint schemes. The Rhinos have been fighting the good fight for 10,000 years after all, and millions of them have been shipped all across the Imperium, so it's not surprising that the various chapters and regiments want their own Rhinos to stand out from all the others, if only so they can find them in the pre-battle staging area. Here are our Rhino Space Marines again. They are bound and determined to ride outside the vehicle, which I suppose makes it easier to shoot and to disembark once they roar into a combat zone. On page 58, John Blanche offers some sage advice about painting and converting GW's first polystyrene kit. That image on the right looks suspiciously like a Predator tank prototype to me, so perhaps they were teasing a glimpse of things to come. On page 59, we get stats for the standard configuration Rhino and learn that the venerable vehicle's ancient design is actually a holdover from the dark age of technology. Apparently there was a complex standard template construction system, otherwise known as the STC, which allowed colonists to fabricate vital standardized equipment from locally available materials. Though the STC systems that originally conceived it are long gone, the RH-1N0 Tracked Exploration and Multi-Defense Vehicle continues to serve humanity with a trusted proven design that has remained unchanged for 10 millennia. And finally, on pages 64 and 65, there is a full color spread of Rhino pattern variants for various Space Marine chapters and Imperial Guard regiments. I especially like the Medic and Chaplain patterns here. I've never seen a Warhammer 40k ambulance before, but it might make for an interesting victory condition. You know, evacuate the wounded officer before the command post is overrun. All right, my friends, that is our trip back to the glorious year of 1988 to look at some classic old hammer rhinos from the days of yore. If you have thoughts on today's video, please leave a comment and share what you think of these venerable rogue trader assault vehicles. Perhaps you still have a few of your own rampaging across the tabletop. We'll be back shortly with some more tabletop wargaming curiosities. But until then, take care of yourselves out there. Try to sneak in a game if you can. And we'll see you next time.